We talk so much about being a student here in Canada, but somehow we always forget to talk about what comes after that. That is what we're going to discuss in this video. But before we go into the video, please do subscribe to my channel because that is what motivates me to make more videos. So first of all, you completed your course. Great. The next thing that you will be requiring to apply for a post-graduation work permit is the completion of your uh, course. So basically, this is something that you would get from your college. It's basically a letter that states that you have completed the course. It's like a course completion certificate that you would have probably seen in your home country. So this is exactly the same. So with this, this is the letter you will basically use to apply for the post-graduation work permit. So uh, generally, most of the colleges would give it to you within like two weeks. But in case if it's an emergency for you, if you have like secured a job immediately and you have to apply for a post-graduation work permit in order to keep that job or keep that offer with you. So in that case, you can reach out to your college immediately and let them know about uh, the reason why you want the course completion certificate immediately. If that's not required, you can obviously wait for two or three weeks whenever the college would be giving you the course completion certificate. So let's say you completed the course in today, which is January the 11th. So basically what you do is you will have to stop working on that particular day. If today is the last day of your college, you need to stop working from 12th of January until the day uh, you apply for your post-graduation work permit. Let's say you get your um, course completion certificate by Jan 30th and then you apply for your post-graduation work permit on Feb 1st. So as soon as you apply, you are eligible to start working. Nonetheless, you will receive a letter from IRCC within 24 hours of your application stating that you can join or continue to work uh, wherever you are working. So the very first step that you need to do is obtain the course completion certificate from your college whether you want it early or whether you want it, you're okay with waiting for it, whatever it is, once you get it, apply for the post-graduation work permit. So what is the next important thing that most of us, I, I, I think most of us do not know, at least people I have met um, and initially even I did not know that there was such a thing. So basically it's the TRV, which is Temporary Resident Visa. So do not get confused between a permit and a visa. So basically, when it's a visa, it's the sticker that's stuck inside your passport. This is something that was stuck inside your passport before you entered Canada, maybe. Most probably back in your home country, this sticker would have been there inside your passport. And then when you landed in Canada, you would have received a letter, which is almost this size from the immigration officer. So the letter that you received is the permit and the sticker inside your passport is the visa. So a lot of us do get confused by this because the moment we apply for post-graduation work permit, we think that is it. That is all we have to apply. But there's this visa. The reason why you have to apply for a visa is because in case you decide to visit your home country while coming back, it is necessary to have the visa stuck inside your passport because this is what allows you to travel and enter back into Canada. So what happens is generally the visa that's inside your passport is the student visa. Since you're coming from outside, they make it a mandatory step for you to have that visa inside the passport. But when we are applying for a post-graduation work permit, we are already inside Canada. So it's not a mandatory step to do it. But if you're going outside Canada and coming back, that's when it becomes a problem. 
so a lot of us do not know about this we tend to forget about it and we don't uh, we don't make it as a mandatory step it's a very simple process in fact it just costs us hundred dollars to complete uh, the temporary resident visa process so all you need to do is make sure that once you apply for the work permit you would receive the work permit in your hand with that work permit you can apply for a temporary resident visa so the visa that you got when you entered the country is basically the uh, visa that would probably expire uh, within three months of your course completion so that is the reason why you need to apply for a trv so that your trv would be extended until your uh, work permit is applicable here in canada so that is how the trv works so basically do not get confused with these two things because these two things are mandatory for you to apply if you are an international student who is willing who is planning to travel back and forth it is mandatory that you apply for a trv so keep that in mind and the other thing that you need to apply when you get your work permit is update your sin number so basically the sin number does not change until you apply for a pr it's going to be the same sin number but generally the expiry date of your sin number will be uh, as long as your permit is valid so now that you have an extended permit as in now that you have a work permit with you you need to apply for a sin number uh, i mean you need to update your sin number which means you will be updating the expiration date of your sin of your sin number so in my case it's 3 years extension so that will be updated on my sin number so this is required because uh, when you are applying uh, for the job i mean once you start working after a point of time uh, obviously you will have to update your sin number and let them know that you've updated your sin number because only with a valid sin number you will be able to work in your company so make sure you complete the sin number process as well the next thing that you can do is basically you are now eligible to apply for a health card yes that's right not just pr even work permit holders can apply for a health card so basically this health card would be valid uh, as long as your uh, work permit is valid so basically how this works is uh, you will just need a letter from your employer stating that either you're a full time employee or uh, they intend to employ you for another 6 months so this way you are proving that you're going to be in canada for an extended period of time so which means you can up, you are eligible to apply for a health card so health card is something that is absolutely necessary and even when you go for any visits here in any of the clinics even for sm for the smallest things you have no idea what you are about to pay because everything is very expensive here even for um to to be to be precise i actually had an accident like uh when i was a student uh, not a very major accident i actually fell off the stairs and i was very doubtful whether my leg was fractured and the first thing that hit my mind was oh my god how am i going to pay for this and what is going to happen to every every everything but i knew that i do have an insurance as a student but even when it comes to an insurance i will have to pay for it up front and then i will have to claim it with the insurance that's how the whole thing works um so i was a bit scared and when i went there of course it did cost a lot for me as a student of course because uh it was not as easy as how it was for me back in my home country uh so first thing i did was i i thought i could just directly go to an x-ray place and get my leg checked but that did not happen i obviously had to go to a doctor and he he or she would refer me 
to uh, a, a place where I can go get uh, an x-ray. So once the x-ray was uh, completed, then the doctor would get back to me and let me know if everything was okay and all that. Thankfully, I did not have, uh, you know, a lot of issue, but I did get the x-ray and it costed me somewhere around $100 for the visit and $100 for the x-ray. And this is the cost for everything. But if I had a health card, I would not have paid a penny at that point of time. So basically, uh, a health card is definitely something that's going to help you a lot. Uh, even though there are long queues and the health care is a bit uh, kind of late in a lot of scenarios but here if you just walk if you go for any walk-in clinics if, if if it's just a mild fever or whatever it is uh, you will definitely have to pay a doctor's fees but you if you have a health card it's definitely going to benefit you even for the smallest thing so do not neglect that uh, so all you need is an employer uh, letter and once you have that you can apply for the health card and obviously it's going to benefit you so these are the things that you must definitely apply for once you complete uh, your course and once you secure a job these are the things that is absolutely going to uh, help you and do not forget these things these are some of the mandatory things that you need to do Thank you so much for watching this video, guys. I hope uh, this video was interesting. If it was, please do subscribe to my channel because you know. Bye. Take care.